would it make sense instead of talking about kilt outfits as casual or semi-formal or formal to describe the styles in terms of more a context or a, a, an aesthetic so for instance an athletic kilt out outfit a pub crawling outfit a victorian edwardian gentleman outfit a J jacobite or highlander outfit etc etc um and in that case um, how would you how would you differentiate between those styles and how, what would we recommend for crafting styles like that? How would you proceed if you wanted to use that as a kind of a, a starting point? Um, yeah, that's basically um, it, it makes sense and it doesn't make sense simultaneously. Um, you're potentially opening up too many options um, and too many options of event types and potentially too many options of things within the events so casual you know casual can mean you know a, in a range of things um a pub outfit do you go to the pub in a polo do you go to the pub after work in a dress shirt and a vest do you go to the pub in a t-shirt and a pair of ripped jeans or shorts or whatever um do you wear sandals or do you wear you know wingtips it, it's it's different aesthetics depending on your particular taste so to some degree it makes sense but it's, it all falls down to personal preference based on the event. Um, there's also a matter of the climate. Are you in the middle of winter or are you in the desert? What's your climate? That's gonna dictate the type of clothes, the type of accessories, the other type of things that you would wear with it. Eric? I think that makes sense from a pragmatic standpoint. Um, however, I, I would say that uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Uh, and we're all going to draw inspiration from different places. So, yes, if you think about the kinds of places you're going to go in the kilt or uh, want ideas of how you're going to wear a kilt, uh, go for the visual. And I'm dovetailing this with a question Will had asked us some time ago, which I wanted to get to, which was, um, what did we think about inspiration and resources for doing a pre-modern look, particularly a Victorian look? And uh, visual references are going to be your guide. If you are an athlete, say, let's start with that one, and you're going to be planning on going to Highland Athletics, you're going to look at what other Highland athletes are wearing and probably imitate what they're doing. In that case, very much leaning towards the practical uh, because it's a rough and tumble activity in a rough and tumble environment. Um, going to a pub, you're going to look at uh, images, hopefully, of guys who are at a pub or at a party and follow suit. Um, Visual searches online in this day and age can really, really help you hone in what you want to do for a look. Uh, the devil is in the details, as always, so it's going to be the choice of accessories that, that are going to um, dictate how you wind up presenting once you put it all together. So, uh, rule of thumb advice would be keep it simple. You know, a simple sporin can wind up uh, serving for a more historically inspired look a lot of the time, as well as a he looks nice, he's going to the pub with his friends, kind of a look. We, we often say that a kilt itself is the most flexible garment in the world. You can wear one kilt going to, you know, going to a festival, and then that, that night you could go to a black tie affair with the exact same kilt, potentially. Um, just please have a shower in between. The, um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think sometimes what people's inspiration comes from can be very important for how they make their choices for, uh, getting started number one and number two and probably more importantly when you start collecting after you get your basic outfit together it's like i need a kilt i need a sporin i need a pair of hose you know those basics will get you through a number of different settings but once you start collecting gear you want to look more at visual sources of the stuff that inspires you to make your choices um will had mentioned uh in his previous question using things like mckeon prints for trying to craft a 19th century kind of aesthetic. And my basic response in my head at the time was, um, they're great, but it's an artistic interpretation. So I would say go with photography first and foremost above all. Although even then you do have to be cautious because there's a difference between photography that was of uh, someone like John Brown, you know, and there's an actual honest goodness, you know, work, work in the day as a Highlander, professional Highlander if that makes any sense. 
Um, a person who actually lives it versus someone who went to Scotland on vacation and decided to get their picture taken in a photography studio in Edinburgh with all the props provided by the studio, which was a very common thing in the 19th century. Um, and sometimes it can be hard to spot the, the, the details as like, wait a minute, is that really his sporn or is that something that the photographer gave him for this look? So take anything you see with a grain of salt. Um, but, but yeah, look for visual representations online. Use Pinterest for crying out loud. Um, there's lots of pictures of guys in kilts on Pinterest. And uh, there, there's all manner of different styles you can, you can do based on all kinds of different ins inspiration. Um, I obviously lean more towards the historical stuff, you know, when I'm not super cash like this. Um, if you keep it simple, you'll have more flexibility. Uh, if you look at what the guy from the 1920s is wearing for his sporin, you can match that to the kind of sporin you might want for getting a similar kind of look. To your point about historical photographs, the point I love to make is just because there is an example of photograph from 100 years ago or whatever, 150 years ago, doesn't, well, 100 years ago, um, does not mean that it is widely accepted or readily done or, or widely done. If you took the photo of Richard Branson wearing his kilt backwards and you could make an argument for 100 years from now, look, rich guys back in the early 2000s wore their kilts backwards. Here's my photographic evidence. It's not true. It's he was one guy, did an idiot move, looked dumb, happened to have it caught on film, boom, it's now a thing. It's it, the same kind of thing may have been true a hundred years ago. There was idiots back then, same way there's idiots now. Um, so don't just accept everything blanket as fact because there's an old timey photograph. Um, the other thing I would point out is yes, form follows function. It's you want to, there, the kilt has traditions, has conventions, has things that you wear in a certain way for the most part but you can make it your own. That's the beauty of this. It doesn't have to be just old guy stuffy and it doesn't have to be just, you know, super casual. You make it your own. If you love wearing polo shirts, great, wear a polo shirt. If you want to wear a, a button down shirt or a sweater or a t-shirt or a Prince or a tweed jacket, great, make it your own. Take your existing Saxon wear personality, the stuff that you wear outside of Highland wear and incorporate that same look the same vibe, the same thing into your Highland wear. It doesn't have to conform to one look or another, like it doesn't have to conform. You can do what you want within it, within reason, or incorporate your personality within your outfit. Does that make sense? I, yeah, yeah. I think um, you could also take it the opposite direction, that basically I dress like this all the time. I want to be I want to live my fantasy. You know, I want to be something special when I put on a kilt. I want to be outside my norm when I put on the kilt. So the opposite can be true. Um, I think that's probably where some guys get into the more historical styles or the more, you know, we're seeing a, an increase in interest in uh, more exotic jacket and doublet types um, because people want something that's out of the ordinary. You know, we're, we're, we're tired of the mundane. You know, that's partly why we get into this in the first place. I think that Will's methodology or, or thought is especially useful for communicating with a kilt seller if you have the opportunity to work with one um, with uh, better communication like in person or writing to them directly because you can say look this is what i really want to look like you know what i really love is session music and irish pub stuff and i want to have that feeling like i just walked off the estate and walked into the village pub you know after a day up in the hills you know so I, i'm and, and they can say okay what you're gonna look for then is a tweed, probably like this, possibly a weather tartan, yada, 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 and they can help lead you. Um, so I think these are all clues. These are all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they're metaphoric. <clears throat> yes, you know I mean? no, they're, no, they're, no. It's, let, me, let me help you out here. I, I know exactly where you're going. Um, and to, my, to the point that I'm trying to make, you don't want the company, you are an individual period. You should be treated like an individual, period. This is your style. It's not my style that I'm forcing on you. It should be your style. So to take a one size fits most kind of mentality and shove it down everyone's throats is kind of wrong. Some people want that to happen because they don't know what they're doing, but you don't want the tail to wag the dog. 
you as the customer should come with an expectation or some thought of how you want to wear it, what you want to do, and then the company should meet you halfway and help guide you to make sure you're getting the look you want. Not, here's, here is your outfit, you wear this jacket, you wear this sporn, you wear these hose, this is your tartan, these are your, boom, done, get out the door. It's, it has to be a marriage of your ideas, your concept, your reality, and they need to help you get there. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, not every guy is going to have the opportunity to have that level of interaction with who they're buying from. Um, so I would say that lacking that experience, I mean, we're used to trying to offer that here. But um, if somebody's out in Addis Ababa and they have to do all their shopping online, it may be more difficult. So I would say the visual examples are, are still useful. Um, I think the trick would be to look for more than one. Find, you know, if, if, the, if the image in your head is, I want to look like, 1920s uh, guy going to you know a Highland Games, okay. Then do do some visual research and come up with the average. He's like, oh, this guy's got a really funky sporn. Is that what they wore back then? Uh, okay, but this guy has a really ordinary sporn. Oh, that reminds me of the one that Prince Charles wears even today. Hmm, maybe I need something that's kind of in the middle, or maybe I need to go more towards what Prince Charles is wearing. Find more than one example. Do not hook your look that you want on one person um you know don't don't go thinking okay it's jamie frazier and just jamie frazier that's exactly what i want or you know or or it's you know vin diesel and his leather kilt that's exactly what i want look at averages look at what different people do in different contexts there's so much visual information out there um yeah the the, the terms are the terms are very useful i think you know i want an athletic look i'm gonna be i want a pub look i want a historic look at yada 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 um it, we we tell people do homework it's yeah this is a, a major part of what it means to do your homework is to look at visual examples yep exactly and, and figure i'll out say, what I'll say the facebook good. groups are the facebook groups are great for that yeah and so. figure out what you think looks good what and more importantly what you think doesn't look good and then steer your way away from that a little bit and but right. it doesn't matter where you shop whether it's with usa kilts or whether it's with another company, make sure they are helping you reach your goal because you don't want to spend $500, $1,000, on an outfit that you don't like the end result of. So make sure that they care about how you look almost as much as you do. So ask questions and make them help you. That's why, they're there. That's why they should be there. So what do you guys think? What would be your dream outfit? What would it include and where would you wear it? If you like the kind of content we're putting out, please remember, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you get more notifications when we come out with new stuff.